This is a new Panasonic uh, EVA1, EVA1. Hello, so who are you? Uh, hello, I'm Luc Barra, I'm the Cinema Product Manager uh, Europe for Panasonic. And we are here at uh, IBC 2017 and Panasonic stand with the new EVA1. So this is a very exciting product for the, the whole cinema, broadcasting, uh, everybody, right? What's, like this is a big deal, right? What are you yeah, saying yeah. here? I think the, the target for this camera is very, very wide because uh, first it's a very compact camera so the idea was to have something compact to put on the, very easily on a, on a gimbal stabilizer or drones. You can very quickly remove the, the handles and the grip and have a very compact box. It's just 1.2 kilos. And then um, it's part of the cinema camera range because it has the same uh, uh, same kind of sensor as the Varicam. It was developed by uh, the sensor was newly developed by Panasonic, and it has all the Varicam technology: the dual native ISO, it has the Varicam log curve, it has the Varicam uh, color space. So it's a perfect match with the Varicam. If you have both, you can use the same uh, color workflow with the same LUT or the same uh, IDT. It's a, it's a new sensor you've developed, a Super 35, right? Do the Varicam use that format? Or did yeah, I mean, Varicam and EVA have the same size as uh, Super 35. It's about 24.6 millimeters. But the EVA has a 5.7K sensor. It's about uh, 17 million pixels. It's just kind of like when the GH5 has a 6K record mode, is it something similar to the GH5 6K? Or uh, we, don't, we don't record 6K or 5.7K, we, re we record only 4K, but to have a real 4K resolution on the picture, you know what we call TV lines, if you want to have 2000 TV lines, you need to have more than 4K resolution. It's just like for HD if you, or 2K, if you want to have 2K, you need something like 2.8K on the sensor. And then it, it, uh, it kind of like uh, optimizes the image, it, it downscales it. Exactly. That's having more details. Yeah. Like, actually, if you want to have HD, you know that you, you need to have uh, three sensors, like one blue, one green, one red. When you have large sensor, you cannot have three sensors, so you have a mono sensor, but you need more resolution than HD to have a real HD resolution. It's same for 4K. Can we look in the menu? Yes, sure. So uh, right here, you, this is a included uh, screen that you have, yeah. uh, LCD. And you have two kind of menu. You have this one. It looks like every, you know, the menu you have on every cinema camera. And you have this menu, like kind of menu you have on uh, every G5. camera, every uh, ENG camera. Or, yeah. So can we look at the record settings? Or is there anything secret in there or no? No, no, it's not so secret. Kind of record settings and uh, you can, can you show the, the codec and everything that you have? So first there are three recording modes. You have the Super 35 5.7K, so you can record up to 60p in 4K using the full resolution sensor, uh, full sensor resolution. Then we have a, what we call a mix 2.8K. It means that if you want to shoot up to 120 frames per second, you have to mix the pixels, so you, you keep the full full size of the sensor, but you mix pixels 4x4, four four, and the resolution is 2.8K. And then you record 2K from this up to 120 frames per second. And then the third mode is what we call four third crop and mix 2.2K. It means two things. First, we crop like a four-third uh, sensor, like GH5 sensor, so it will have uh, the same uh, size, actually a bit, a bit wider. You crop and you mix the pixels, so you have a 2.2K pixels and crop, and you can record 2K up to 240 frames per second. And it's nothing to do with using an adapter and putting on a Micro Four Thirds lenses on there? No, 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 no. It's just, it's just the size, the, we, we crop, after the crop we have the um, about the same size uh, of, uh, of uh, GH5 or GH4. And uh, if we go in the, in the, in the 5.7K, let's go in there and let's look at all the, can you show all the codecs that you have? And, uh, yeah, well, it's, well, it's uh, somewhere else. But here you have the main pixel, so you can shoot 4K, Ultra HD, 2K, HD, or even HD 27, uh, 720p. Then if you choose, uh, okay, now we are also ready. We have the main, main codec. Main codec. Yeah, lots of codecs here. It's 422, long up, 
4 to 2 10 bits long dub codec at 150 megabits per second. For 60 frames per second? No, up to, up to 30 frames per second. Then up to 60 frames, you will, uh, it will be 4 to 0. 4 to 0. But yeah. you can shoot 4, okay, 4 to 2 10 bits up to 30 frames per second. And we will have uh, in the next upgrade uh, intra codec. So it will be 4 to 2 intra at 400 megabits per second. All right. And uh, is it possible you might also have something with H.265? Um, I think that the, the, the platform inside the camera is uh, is H.265 ready. But it's possible. should be possible. But it's hard to do post-production with H.265, right? Yeah, n now it's, I think it's still not uh, because something people is want. Is it possible you will upgrade it to make it possible to record 5.7K full? Uh, we, we, we will have a, um, a raw output uh, in the next upgrade. On the, on the X, that yeah, will be output. On yeah, the we have a SDI output and HDMI output. <laughs> so, on the HDMI output, you can output 4K, 4 to 2, 10 bits, up to 60p. So, if you have uh, an external recorder, just like the Chevron Inferno, you can record 4K, 60p in ProRes HQ, for example. Okay. And on the SDI output, you, we will be able, able to output uh, 4K, I mean 5.7K raw up to 30p, or 4K up to 60p with a with a prop. Is it? Is there any chance you will record it internally in 5.7K? No, 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 not raw internally, no. Not raw internally, or maybe in one of the codecs. And uh, so that that was for the codecs, and uh, you have uh, all the controls that people would like to have on the side here. Yeah, we have the, the control for the iris, auto iris, manual iris, we can have a auto push auto focus. We have switch, so we have a lot of uh, assignable buttons, so it, uh, you can assign uh, whatever you want on these buttons. We have eight user buttons. Here with, with this dial button, you can control the white balance, you can control the ISO, or you can control whatever you want, like the, the, the audio, uh, audio level in the headphone. Uh, there is a nice feature, there are two nice features we can talk about. Uh, one is uh, you can assign here a function that removes the IR filter, infrared filter. You can see it There's here. something physical inside, right? Yeah, you can see it on the... Oh, okay. You can see the filter wheel. So this is something that... And you can put your own filters in there? No, no, no. no, you yeah. cannot. Yeah. No, no. no, but IR filter, um, a lot of people who shoot documentary, uh, uh, want to remove the IR filter, so usually they have to to remove the mount and the filter and to modify the camera. And now on this one, you can just push a button to remove the IR filter and and put it back. Very very simply. And the IR filter, what kind of function is it for dark? Yeah, the idea of the idea of uh, IR filter is to shoot at night. If you shoot in the nature uh, at night, you have a lot of infrared light that you cannot see, but the camera can see it without the air filter. So the colors will not be the right color anymore, but you get all the details and you, I mean, you have the, the a very, very high sensitivity. Can we uh, take off the lens and show the, it's just a sure. standard atta attachment? Yeah, it's a EF mount, so the, the mount is inside the camera, so there is nothing, nothing outside. And this is so you have Sigma. There's lots and lots of different lenses yeah, that work. Most, most of the photo lens are of the EF mount. Then on the cine lens, you can find some uh, Zeiss lens. We have here a CP3 Zeiss lens. You have Ingenieux Zoom that can be. Can yeah. you look at this one, for example? What is this one? So, this is an uh, ingenious zoom, and you can change the mount to have it in PL or EF. And, uh, you this is a very high-end len uh, lens right there. Uh, they have, uh, they have a better Top lens, but right. it's, uh, I think it's about uh, 10k euro, this lens. All right. So it's consistent with the price of the camera. And what is on this one here? This one has a Canon Prime lens, Cine lens. So you put on a Canon Prime so, Cine lens. Yeah, 24, it's T1.5. Uh, we also have a Sigma lens. So Sigma, they have photo lens and Cine lens. So there is a 
great variety of lens you can use uh, on the EF mount. And you can also have a PL adapter if you want to push any PL lens. There are some PL adapters, they are very, very small. And you can do it. Uh, we should be now, as it is now, we, did, we didn't plan initially to do some anamorphic function because there are very few uh, anamorphic lens in EF mount. Uh, but still they are, so we are thinking about uh, doing something for anamorphic, yes. And uh, you have all kinds of uh, um, uh, ways people can set it up, with screws all over the place. Yeah, there's people can kind of uh, integrated uh, cheese plate. Yeah. So here this is accessory from Ari, with uh, additional uh, cheese plate. But um, we thought it was a good idea to have an uh, integrated cheese plate. Basically, it's just that part here, and people do whatever they want. They can also put a EVF, or what's it called. A, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. You yeah. can connect some third-party EVF, yeah. but uh, you won't be able to connect it to your cable, right? You, uh, no, this, no, you. This thing here, but what is this LCD connector here? Yeah, it's a connector for the LCD that comes with the camera, but then you can use the EVF on the HDMI output or on the SDI output. All the outputs are active uh, simultaneously, so you don't have to choose between SDI, viewfinder, or HDMI. Everything's working uh, simultaneously. So for this one, there's only going to be that screen for now. Yeah. There's not some other bigger ones or for that connector here. But no. That doesn't matter because you just use HDMI, right? It doesn't slow anything down to use any of the outputs. It has everything no. yeah. fully active. Absolutely. All right. And the battery is going to be uh, some big ones there? Battery, it's gonna have a, there is no battery here. But it's, a, it's a standard battery and a, that you can, I mean, it's the same battery as the battery we have for the DVX200 or the PX270. It's a, it's a standard battery for Panasonic. C can you show how you can uh, move this around? Yeah, sure. So there is a, it's, it's like a lens mount. So you can very quickly lock it or unlock it. And then you can turn it on the other side too. Yeah, and uh, once it's, uh, there is a push button and you can turn it. So, uh, so what is that one? Oh, that's that's the connector for this. Uh, that's the connector for the grip because in the in the grip you have the rake button, you have a. The menu button, you have the user button here, there, and you have a dial button that you can use for the for the iris or for the menu. Uh, can, can we walk over here just one second? Yeah. And uh, uh, if you could maybe grab that one just uh, just to get an idea, uh, what do you think is the impact going to be on the on cinema, like all over the world? Uh, what, what is this going to be able to bring? I think for cinema, for big production, they may, it may not be the, the camera A, but uh, it's very likely that it's a camera B for, for drones, for a gimbal stabilizer, or when, when you have to shoot in a very narrow place. Um, especially also because the, the, the color salient and the sensor match perfectly with the very cam. So if you can mix the two images, you have the same color workflow with the same LUT, same IDT. So it's uh, maybe it will be used on a big production. But for indep independent films, right? Uh, lower budget. Independent films, of course. It's, uh, it's a perfect camera. Right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. And how does it com how does it compare with red? Something I can ask. How does the positioning is specifically? Well, in term in term of uh, price, it's a totally different uh, range of price with the red. Maybe with the red raven. Um, I think the difference is the main difference. Maybe is that uh, it's not only. Uh, I sorry, I I don't know much the specification of the red, but uh, we have an internal recorder on SD card that are very cheap, and uh, we can record. Uh, we have a H.264 compressed format. Uh, in 4K, 422, 10 bits. Um, easy to work with. Yeah, easy to work with. And I think the main difference with uh, red, but I, I don't want to to, 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 uh, yeah. to talk about competitors, but we, on, on the very cam, we have a very, very nice uh, sensor and uh, color space and very nice colors. I think if I, if I had to choose the very cam, if it would be for the colors, for the sensor, for what you can do with post-production, when you see when you see the picture on the 
Uh, when you when you work on the log picture and you, for example, you you transform to uh, ACS color space, you see immediate, immediately the right color, the right tone, and the right. Um, and they are very, very rich color. Usually, you have to desaturate the color because it's too it's too rich, and the skin tones are just right. Is it it's ready for HDR? It's ready. Yes, it's ready for HDR. So it's ready for HDR because we have a very big dynamic range. It's 14 stops of dynamic range. Dynamic range. So you you can do the grading for uh, HDR screening, and also because uh, we have a log curve. We have the HLG log curve uh, that allows you to record directly with the HDR log curve. Directly, and it looks great. So it's gonna be. Uh it's going to be uh, also great for broadcast, right? Uh, we or have, we have. I met, I met some broadcasters oh, here. Yeah, they, they would like to have this camera for uh, for news, but for special uh, special footage when they when they need to when they have time when they have tripod for interviews or some special shots. So most of the time they need a run and gun camera, but they are interested in that to change the look to, to give a more aesthetic look to the image. How's the low light and the noise? Uh, so on this camera we have the you know the dual native uh, sensitivity. I can't remember if I talk about it already, but we have 800 ISO and 2500 ISO. So in both modes you have the same dynamic range, the same color, the same contrast, the same log curve. Um, so the only thing that, that changes is that when you have a very, very low light, you can see what we call the shot noise. It's the noise that comes from the light itself, not, not from the electronic. But the, the, the Varicam and the EVA, I mean, the, the, so far we had the Varicam, and the Varicam is uh, very uh, famous for shooting in a very low condition, and it's very, very impressive. The so dual ISO on the Varicam is 800 and 5000. This is 800 and 2500. So it's still very high sensitivity, 2500. And on this camera, it's a native sensitivity, so it means 2500 without any gain or uh, electronic uh, amplification. And this is a unique something you have from the Varigam, unique for your company, nobody has this kind of tech. Yes, as far as I know, we are the, the only one, yes. All right, so it's going to be great. There's going to be so many uh, movies at the next Cannes Festival, right? How soon is it released? How much is going to cost? Uh, the recommended price is uh, 7,290 euros. 7,290 euros. So this is the recommended price, uh, the public price, but uh, you have to ask your dealer what, uh, what's your price. And uh, how soon? Uh, it will come uh, end of October, so in one month from now. Very soon, all right. Cool, all right, that's awesome. Yeah, right there, right there, there it is. EVA.